Okay, you ready? Okay, so first thing I want to point out to you is that when you start this FRQ, the first thing that you should notice is that instead of it being 0 to x, it's 0 to 2x. That means when you take the derivative, it's going to be, we learned it yesterday, chain rule. No, also a fundamental theorem, that's true too, but it's the chain rule version of that. So in part A, we're going to find g of 1, g prime of 1, g double prime of 1. So let's start with g of 1. So when I plug in 1, right here, where my 2x is, is my integral going to be from 0 to 1? No, it's going to be 0 to 2, because you're plugging in 1, but there was already a 2 up there with the x, yeah? So for part A, g of 1 equals 0 to 2x, so I'm going to put 0 to 2, okay? And then f of t dt. Okay, come on. Okay, so from 0 to 2, shade it in on your graph. Okay, what shape is that going to be? Okay, a little triangle, one half base times height. What's your base? 2. two. What's your height? Two. 1 half, 2 times 2 is? 2. Good. So I would shade in right here. Thank you. When you take, that's a good question, when you take the derivative. So in the very next one, when we find g prime, remember, chain rule is one of the derivative rules that you learned. So now we're going to do it. Yeah, when you're plugging in g, you're just doing the integral. Okay, so ready? I'm going to write up here, g of x equals 0 to 2x, f of t dt. And now I'm going to find the derivative and then the second derivative. Yes. So I plugged in 1. That's why it came out to be 2, was it was 2 times 1. You got it. Okay? So when I take the derivative of the integral, remember that I'm going to take my 2x, I'm going to plug it in so that now it's f of 2x times 2. And remember, where does the times 2 come from? Because it's the derivative of 2x, which is what my boundary was. Okay, now while we're at it, let's take the second derivative. So g double prime will be the derivative of f of 2x. f prime of 2x. Because remember, it didn't already have a prime, right? So it goes to f prime, but then I'm going to have to times by what from the middle? Another 2, but I already had a 2. So what is it now? A 4. Got it? So you are doing chain rule when you take the first derivative and the second derivative. Because it's not just f of x, it's f of 2x in the middle. Okay, so from here, come down to this part. Now I want g prime of 1. Okay, well then I'm going to look at my g prime, which is right here. When I plug in a 1 for my x, what am I actually going to be looking at? f of 2. And then I'm going to times by 2. Remember, this 2 is not inside. So it'll be f of 2 times 2. Now, just like all the other questions, though, where am I going to find f of 2 in the graph? It'll be the y value. Very good. So look at your graph at 2. What's the y value? 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Okay, next we want g double prime of 1. Okay, well then I'm going to be plugging in 1 here in the middle again. So if I plug in my 1 right here, f prime of 2, but this time it's times a 4. Because by the time I've done the second derivative, I've done chain rule twice. That's why I have a 4 in the front. Okay, then from here, f prime of 2 is going to be the slope at 2. What's the slope of this line segment here? Count your rise over run. Positive 2? Negative 2. So it would be negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. Got it? All right, let's do part B. This time what we want g of negative 2, g prime of negative 2, and g double prime of negative 2. So let's find those. g of negative 2 will be the integral from 0 to where? Well, but hold on. What's up there with my x? 
it's a negative 4 now. Because remember, whatever my x is, I have to multiply it by the 2 that was with the x. Okay, so I'm going to write it like this just because some of y'all are making the squinty, confused face. It'd be like that, right, since it's 2x. So really, that's 0, 2, 4. Negative 4, you're right, sorry. 0, 2, negative 4. Uh, it is backwards, that's true. So when I find my area, I'm going to have to change the sign. Okay, so shade for me in your graph from 0 to negative 4. Um, part of it is a trapezoid. Okay, if I go from 0 to negative 4, okay, that is, here's the problem with calling it a trapezoid, is that uh, your bases have to be parallel. These guys aren't parallel to each other. So what I'm going to do instead, this is going to be a trapezoid. And then what will be left over there on the side? A triangle. Good. And then you'll have to add those two pieces together. So let's do my trapezoid first. One half. Base one plus base two. Here's base one. How tall is it? So this one is three. This one is two. So 2 plus 3. And then I heard somebody, I think, maybe say 4. Remember, 4 is the x value. So it's back 1, 2, 3, 4. That's what that is. Okay, and then what would my width be between them? 3. So 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 times 3 is 15. So it would be 15 halves in this section. Okay. Then look at your other little baby triangle. Okay, you have 1 by 2. So that'd be 1 half 1 times 2, which is 1. Now, those areas are below the x-axis. So normally for an integral, you'd count them as negative. Will you count them as negative here? No, because my integral is backwards. So when I set this equal, I'm going to put positive 15 over 2 and plus 1. And you can add those together, but if you do it wrong, you're going to lose your point. So I'd say just leave it unsimplified. Okay, next we want g prime. And then g double prime. So when I plug into g prime, I'm plugging in my negative 2 for the x right here. What am I really finding f at? What value? Negative 4. So it'll be f of negative 4 and then times 2. Because remember, that 2 is built in with the x. To, so where, whatever your x is, you're going to have to double it. Okay, then from there, uh, f of negative 4, what is my y value at negative 4? Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Good. Okay, next I want g double prime at negative 2. g double prime is going to involve the slope, but the slope where? At negative 2, negative 4. Very good. So it'll be f prime of negative 4 times 4. Okay, count the slope of that line segment for me there, please. What is my rise over run for this chunk? It's up 1 and then over 3. So it'd be 1 third times 4. And you could write it as four-thirds if you like that better. That's totally fine. Okay. From here, it's going to get a little bit tricky, so I want you to make sure you're paying attention. The first part is easy, though. I'm asked to find mins, maxes, and neithers. So where are those going to be on the graph? On the x's, right? So put dots on all your x-intercepts. And then I want you to label them on the graph as a min or a max. Yes, sir. Why isn't it negative? Because the slope is uphill. It's a positive one-third slope. Yeah. Are you talking about on this part? Or on this part? This one? Yeah, so at that point, the integral is gone. So you don't have to repeat. That's only for area that you would change the sign. Okay, so where is my maximum at? Which of these guys? Which one's a max? Two. Which one's a min? Zero. Okay, so here's the problem. If I, let's say we're doing two right now, okay? 
I wanted to change sine at 2. If I pick 2, what's going to happen when I plug 2 into my 2x? It's really going to be 4. That's not where it changes sign. So listen carefully to this. You're going to be really confused. Okay, you have to pick the x that when you plug it into 2x gives you the sign change. So if I wanted to change sign at 2, what x do I need to pick? 1. Very good. Does that make sense? Why? If I know I'm going to double it, then I have to like half it to know what to pick for x. Make sense? Okay, so in part c, put x equals 1. Yes. Um, so on the AP test, they would have given you a domain, in which case you could have still found it. But since I wrote that stem, I didn't put that in there, but you're right. He was saying, since it's an end point, don't you have to have the limit on both sides? Usually, yes. They won't do that on the AP test, though. Okay, so for part C, I'll put X equals 1 because G prime of X, which is really F of 2X times 2, changes from plus to minus. Now, somebody in second period, when we did this question yesterday, they were like, well, what about the times 2? Okay, think about it. If you times something by 2, is that going to change whether it was positive or negative? No. If I had negative numbers and I times them by 2, they're still negative. If I had positive numbers and I times them by 2, it wouldn't affect the sign. So this is actually really not important at all. The reason this one matters is because it's with your x. Okay, so then the other one we had was at 0. What will I pick for my x so that I'm looking at 0 on the graph? Still 0. So x equals 0 because g prime of x, which is f of 2x times 2, changes negative to positive. And actually, I'm realizing I forgot to label those. So what did we say x of 1 is? It was a relative max. And this one is a relative min. OK? All right, next I want points of inflection. Points of inflection are going to happen when the slope changes sign. So put x's on your graph wherever your slope changes sign. Okay, look at your graph. It goes uphill, uphill, downhill. Where was the change? At 1. Yeah? Yes, ma'am? The relative Uh-huh. Well, because remember, when I plug in 1 to 2x, it's really going to be at 2. So you have to pick kind of like the wrong number so that it ends up being the right number. Okay? So if I want this to be at 1, that's where my x goes on my graph. That's where my POI is. Okay, then what x will I have to pick so that when I double it, I get 1? A half. Yes, that's right. Okay, so come down here. We're going to put, there's a POI at x equals a half because g double prime of x, which is f prime of 2x times 4, the slope of f of 2x changes sign. And then remember that for a POI, it actually doesn't matter which direction it changes sign. It just has to change. Remember, if you're going to leave something out of that explanation, you could leave this part out. But you'd still have to put the slope of f of 2x to remind them that in the graph you were looking at the slope. And then one more time, remember, even though the slope changes at 1, I have to pick a half so that half of 2 comes out to be 1. Yes, ma'am. I was saying if you want to not put something, this is what you're allowed to not put. So you can put it, but you would still get full credit if you put g double prime, the slope of f of 2. Okay? All right, two more parts. Next one. Okay, it says find the intervals where g of x is less than 0. Okay, so let's look at our graph. Okay, g of x is really the integral from 0 to 2x f of t dt. And I want it to be negative. That's what I'm trying to find. 
So let's look at my graph. Where am I always starting my integral from? Zero. So let's look at the graph. If I integrate forward, I'm going to start here. If I integrate forward, what is my uh, sign so far? Positive, because all my area was above. Okay, now at this point, I start accumulating some negative. Will it turn my overall integral negative, though? No, because there's more on top than there is on bottom. So none of my integral going forward is going to come out to be negative. Okay, now let's talk about going backwards. All this area is below. Will that make my integral negative? No, why not? Because it's backwards, very good. So down here you would put for no values of x. And normally on ones like that they wouldn't make you explain it just because it's hard to explain. So if you get the right interval then you'll get it. Okay, but that integral is never going to come out to be negative. Okay, all right, yes ma'am. Yes, it's not enough to turn this whole integral to be negative. And you have to start the integral at zero because that's your constant on the bottom. Okay, so part G, I want you to label this version B. Okay, this is in your homework at several different points. And so I want to make sure that you have it labeled so that you'll know where to look for examples. Okay, so I'm going to remind you what version B is before we do it. So version B is this, capital F of B is capital F of A plus the integral from A to B, F of X dx. Then remember when we were explaining this or learning this, we said this is what we want, this is what we have, and then this is from what you have to what you want. Okay. So, look right here, it says, it is given that capital F of negative 1 is 3. This is what I have. This is what they gave me. F of negative 1 is 3. And then they ask you to find two other points. So, we're going to have to do this twice. First, let's find F of 1. So, this is what I want. I want F of 1. When do I have capital F? At what value? Okay, F of negative 1. Plus, and then I have to set up the integral from what I have to what I want. So I have it at negative 1. I want it at 1. Okay, now, f of negative 1 was just given to me. What is it? It says right here, f of negative 1 is 3 plus. And then how will I find the integral of f? I'll use the area in the graph, right? So look at your graph, negative 1 to 1. I kind of scribbled all over mine. What do you notice about your area? It's going to be 0 because why? Yes. So this chunk right here is going to be area. And then when I come up to my graph and I look between my fingers, negative 1 to 1, those are going to cancel out with each other. So it's going to be 3 plus 0, which is 3. Got it? Okay, let's do f of negative 4. f of negative 4. Okay, so f of negative 4 is what I want now. When was I given it? What do I have? f of negative 1 plus the integral from negative 1 to negative 4, f of t dt. Or actually, you could put f of x dx. It doesn't matter as long as you pick a letter in both spots. Okay, so now think about, I already know f of negative 1, it was 3, they gave me that. This is going to be area. Now look at your graph. What was the area from negative 1 to negative 4? We already found it. 15 halves, good, 15 over 2. Okay, will it be positive or negative? Positive because why? It's still backwards. Negative 1 is bigger than negative 4. So since it's backwards, you're going to count that as a plus 15 over 2. And that would be your answer. Okay? Yes, ma'am? That would have counted as negative. Good. Okay, do we want to do one of those off of the homework before we go on? 
Okay, so get out your homework 13, and we're going to do, find one of the version Bs. Uh, we're going to do this one. Now, I'm only going to help you with part D, because uh, that's the only part that has version B in it. Okay, so first thing I want you to do is read the question and find what you were given, what you already have. Okay, they tell you in that little paragraph. F of 0 is 3. Very good. Right here. Okay, so F of 0 is 3. That's what I have. What is, what is the first thing that I want? F of negative 3. So, part D, F of negative 3 equals, I already have F of 0 plus the integral. And then remember, you always put what you have on the bottom, what you want on the top. Um, it, I'll show you why it's a lowercase here in a second. So from 0 to negative 3. Okay, and now uh, Marisol pointed out a good point. These are lowercase f's, right? What is the graph of, though, here? f prime. So remember that whatever is in your integral should just always be the derivative of what's not in your integral. So if these are capital F's, this has to be a lowercase f. But if these are normal f's, this would have to be an f prime. Okay? And then what is f of 0, we said? 3 plus. And then what am I going to do from 0 to negative 3? I'm going to calculate the area. Very good. So 0 is here, and I'm shading all the way back to negative 3. So I have a little triangle and a big triangle. How big is my little triangle? A half. How big is my big triangle? Two. And so when I count those areas, because this is backwards, I'm going to have to change the sign on them. So my half is actually going to count as a negative a half, and my two is actually going to count as a plus two. Because zero to negative three is backwards. Mm -hmm. Yep, you got it. And if you want to, you can change the order as long as you change it to a negative in the front. To me, that's more confusing, but it's not wrong if you did that. Okay, so now you set up f of 4. And you would just leave it just like that. So f of 4 equals, what would I start with? f of 0 plus from 0 till 4 of f prime of x. Good. And remember, why is it an f prime? Because what's in here has to have the antiderivative here. So the antiderivative of f prime is normal f, right? Okay, so shade in your graph from 0 to 4. And we did one of these, I think, actually, maybe on Tuesday. Do you remember how to find the area of this crust? I don't know what else to call it besides that. Yep, find the area of the rectangle, then subtract the semicircle out of it. Okay, so I would do up here. I'm going to have to do the rectangle minus the semicircle. Okay. So let's find the rectangle first. How tall is my rectangle going this way? Two. How wide is my rectangle going this way? So two times four is eight minus, and I need to take my semicircle out. Okay, what's the radius of my semicircle going this way? Two. So it'd be pi times two squared, but then I only want half of it. So minus a half. 2 squared is 4. Half of 4 pi would be 2 pi. Okay, so this is going to be 8 minus 2 pi. Now, question. When I include that as my integral, will I add or subtract that area? Subtract it because where is that area? Below. Below. Very good. So it will be 3 minus 
8 minus 2 pi. Did I write that correctly? No, you got to put parentheses because remember what ends up happening, okay, is that my negative 2 pi is going to turn out to be positive because even though I'm minusing it, it's below and it crosses out. Or you can just put parentheses. Got it? Okay, cool. All right, go back to your notes. We're going to go through this other FRQ in this packet and then. We're going to go back to your homework and do the last page together to make sure you got it. Hopefully both, we'll see. Okay, so you're looking at this one right here. Okay, also I'll go ahead and just tell you that on the chain rule, most of the time that they've tested this, it's not been chain rule. It's just been normal. That's why I had to make one of these. They've only done chain rule once. So I want you to see it and be sort of good at it, but most of the time it's not going to be chain rule. Okay, so first I want g of 2. Look at your integral. It says up here that g of x is from 1 to x over 2. I'm going to rewrite that as half of x, just because that's the same. Then I have an f of t here plus 3. Now, why is there a plus 3 in there? Who knows? Okay, but it's in there, so we have to include it. Okay, so let's uh, plug in. Our first point is 2. When I find g of 2, am I going to be integrating from 0 to 2? No. I'm going to be going up to half of 2. What is half of 2? 0 to 1. Very good. Okay, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and actually, hold on. I wrote the wrong number on the bottom. What should I have written? One. This should have been a 1. It's so it's going to be 0. Very good. Plus 3. So my integral in here is going to come out to be 0, but the plus 3 is separate, so I need to do 0 plus 3, which is 3. Final answer there. Okay, what I want you to do now is take the derivative, then take the second derivative. Uh, that is a 1. Okay, so g prime of x it's the derivative of an integral so I'm going to keep f the same but it's going to be f of what? one half x that's it times a half now what about the plus three goes away because what's the derivative of plus three? zero okay g double prime what's the derivative of f called? f prime of a half x and then times another half but I already had a half so what is it now? a fourth so just like last time when I already had the 2 and I times by another 2 that same thing is happening here okay so I want g prime of 2 then I want g double prime of 2 so g prime of 2 I'm looking right here is going to be a half of f of what? 1. Because I plug in the 2 with the half. Half of 2 is 1. What characteristic will that be in the graph? The y value. Very good. What is f of 1 in the graph? 0. Half of 0 is 0. Okay, next I want g double prime at 2. Okay, well that's going to be a fourth times f prime of 1. Very good. And what characteristic will f prime be? The slope. Okay, count the rise over run at 1. It is d and e. Because why? It's a cusp. Good. Because f has a cusp at x equals 1. Um, so if you did have to write it, it would have said something like, or state why it doesn't exist. 
And actually, I think we did one the other day where it said that. But it would say that if you had to. Okay, so you do part B. So you're going to find G of 8, G prime of 8, and G double prime of 8. Okay, you can do it. Now, the graph doesn't even go to 8. Is that going to be a problem? No, because we're cutting 8 in half, right? So you're really only going to be integrating till 4. for the first part. Okay, it should have been six. If you got three, you probably forgot to add the second three. So remember that g of eight is the integral from one to four, f of t, and then plus three. So it's three plus three because that's the area of that triangle. Okay, then g prime of eight, you should have written is a half of f of four. f of four in the graph is zero. And then g double prime of eight would have been a fourth of f prime of four. And what is f prime of four? Negative one. So it'd be negative a fourth. Good? Yeah? Okay. Uh, okay, next part. There's one like this on your homework. Look right here where it says to do an equation of a tangent line. Okay, this is on your notes. We're about to do one like it. So if you get confused on that one, okay, you can look at this one. An equation of a tangent line. What two things do you need? Point and a slope. Okay, my point is going to be at what x value? Negative 6, comma. Now, when I find my y value, can I use the y value in the graph if it doesn't even go back that far? No. So we need to think about how will I find the y value at negative 6? Well, I need to plug it into g. So if I want g of negative 6, where am I going to integrate from? From 1 till when? Negative 3. Okay, so they're actually making you do another little mini area problem to get your y value. So from 1 to negative 3, shaded in your graph, what shape is that? Okay, it is a half circle. Very good. 1 to negative 3 is right there. What's your radius? 2. So it would be pi times 2 squared. 
and then cut in half. So that'd be half of 4 pi, which is 2 pi. Now question, will it be counted as positive or negative? Positive, because why? It's below, but it's also backwards. So your endpoints, remember the lower value is supposed to be on the bottom, and the bigger value is supposed to be on the top. Okay, so I have my point. What do I need next? My slope. And in order to find my slope, I need to find g prime of negative 6. And then I come back to this right here. Yes, ma'am? Oh, crap. Yes. Plus 3. Thank you. <sighs> ah, it's all wrong. Okay. Put a plus 3. Okay, so g prime of negative 6, we're going back to right here. So it'd be a half of f of a half of negative 6, which is really negative 3. So look at your graph at negative 3. What is your y value at negative 3? 0. And if your slope is 0, that makes your tangent line really easy because it basically zeroes out the whole right side. But it'd be y minus 2 pi plus 3. 0, x plus 6. And if you wanted to leave the x plus 6 off, that would be okay because it's going to be multiplied by 0 anyway. Got it? Okay. Now we're back on the mins and maxes again. This is where some people get a little confused. So what I want you to do first is mark on the x-axis your two mins and your max. Or maybe it was two maxes and a min, but there are three of them. Okay? So mark your mins and your maxes. Okay, and then when you find what they are, then I want you to find the numbers that we're going to pick for our x's. So mark them on your graph. Which one do I have two of, mins or maxes? Maxes, where are they? Okay, negative 3 and 4. Okay, now think about it. What do I have to pick so that when I plug it in to the half x, it's going to give me negative 3? Yes. Okay, does it make sense why I'm picking negative 6? Because when I plug it in to the half x, what's half of negative 6? Negative 3. And that's where my sign change happens. Okay, then for my 4, you all already said it, it's 8. Because what's half of 8? 4. So if it's a chain rule, you have to kind of in your head reverse that chain rule out of it. So I put, I have relative maxes at x equals negative 6 and 8 because, and then I put g prime of x, which is a half f of a half x changes plus to minus. Okay, then find where your min happens. Where is the min in the graph? Okay, at 1. Then what do I need to pick so that when I half it, I get 1? That should actually be a 2 then. So remember, in the graph I want it to be at 1. Well, then I have to pick 2 so that I can account for it being cut in half later. Okay, and then because dot, 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 dot changes negative to positive. Okay. All right. Two parts left. Okay, next one. We want g double prime to be zero. What is g double prime in the graph? What's g double prime in the graph? It's the slope of f, right? So I want you to mark with x's. There are four places that the slope is zero or undefined. So put x's on all four places that the slope is zero or undefined. Okay, find all four of them. Could be zero, could be undefined. Yeah, that's one of them. Where's your slope zero? Okay, it's undefined at corners and cusps, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so let me ask first, where is my slope zero? There's only one spot where it's zero. At negative one right here. Okay, so that's one of them. Okay, when do I have a corner that would make it undefined? Okay, at two. When do I have a cusp that will make it undefined? Okay, at one. There is a fourth one. How else can your slope be undefined? If it's vertical. Good. So where is it vertical for a second? Negative three. Good. That's the fourth one. This is the one that people usually miss. So remember, an undefined slope could be a corner or a cusp, but it could also just be vertical. That counts. Okay, so down here, remember, we're going to have to switch up the numbers we pick to remember that they're cut in half. Now, which of these actually have sign changes? Because two of them do not have sign changes. Okay, so here I'm downhill, then I'm still downhill. Is that a point of inflection? No. Here I'm downhill, then I go uphill. Is that a point of inflection? Yes. Okay, I'm uphill, then I stay uphill. Does that one count? No, but then here I'm uphill, then downhill. That one counts. So first I want to list these two as my POIs. If this is negative one, what am I going to pick so that I can cut it in half and get negative one? Negative two. This one I want to get two, then what am I going to pick? Four. So come down here, we're going to put there are POIs at x equals negative two and four because f double prime of a half x times a fourth changes sign. But then I'll write that there are also x equals, okay, where are the other two points that we found? One of them was at negative three, what will I pick? Negative six, and what's the other one if I want to pick one? It'd be half of two, right? Okay, but they're not POIs because a fourth f double prime of a half x does not change sign. And actually, I made a mistake in writing that. What is my mistake? It shouldn't be f double prime. It should be f prime. Which is the same as what? g double prime. So make sure that you're careful about that. OK, part e, we're not going to do it. Well, actually, eh, we'll do one of them. OK, let's find f of negative 3. How will I find f of negative 3? version B. So set it up. This is what you want. This is what you have. This is what you want. This is what you have. If I want f of negative 3, I already know f of 1. What is it? 6. And then from 1 to negative 3, what shape is that? It's the 2 pi. Positive or negative on the 2 pi? But it's also backwards. So it'll be positive. Okay, that would be your answer for f of negative 3. Okay, then next we want f of 5. No. This is why. Okay. Thank you for asking that. That's, that's a good question. So the question was, what about the plus 3? Where is the plus 3? Is it in F? Or it's only in G. So unless they're asking you stuff about G, then you actually don't need that plus 3 anymore. Okay? Good question, though. Okay, so if they're asking you about capital F, that doesn't involve any G stuff in it, so we don't have to worry about the plus 3. Okay, f of 5 would be f of 1 plus the integral from 1 to 5. And then from 1 to 5, you would find the area. It's not backwards, so nothing tricky happens there. Okay, got it? 
All right, what I want you to do now, we only have a couple minutes, is just look at the last page of your homework. Okay, you should have gotten a calculator when you came in, hopefully. Okay, we will run through number 10. Okay, hopefully we'll have time to finish it. Okay, so first thing I want you to do is uh, pick which average each of these are. So average velocity, average acceleration. Okay, so if I have velocity and I want average velocity, am I doing average rate of change or average value? Average value. What's average value? Plug in 0 to 4 instead of A and B. So it would be 1 over, okay, 4 minus 0, and then integral 0 to 4. And then you'd have T minus 2 sine t. Okay, go down to part B. I may just have you write them out since we don't have much time left. Okay, part B, I want average acceleration. What's that? A rock. So I would put V of 4 minus V of 0, 4 minus 0. Got it? Okay, part C. At time 5, the particle's position is 2 to the left of the origin. Find the position at 12. What do I want? The position at 12. What do I have? The position when? At 5. And then remember, when you set up your integral, it's going to be 5 till 12. Now, how will you do this integral part in your calculator? Also, what is x of 5? Is it 2? Yeah. To the left, so it would be negative 2 plus. And then you do that in your calculator. Okay? Alright, and then I'll record you a video for number 9 since we're not going to have time. Okay? So you just have like another minute or so. Uh, homework's due tomorrow. You might have a quiz. You might. Okay, it will not be a hard chain rule, though. It'll be like the ones you looked at in your notes. Huh? Mm, I think no. Yeah, some of you have made it Friday every day that we've been here. Watching movies, taking a stupid nap. Yeah. Bye. I think we'll do a solo quiz. I like to give group quizzes when I know everyone's trying, but some of you need to feel the fire. You've been more on your game. Yeah. So I can monitor you. You have been doing great. I know. You answered multiple questions today. I Bonus points in my heart for you. Yes, Thursday? Yep, I'll see you then. Thanks. You know how to get out? I do. Okay, cool. Bye, Pablo. Have a good day.